Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Parks, 225 marathoner and running coach. And today I wanna to have a chat about cross training and how we can get this into your regular running routine to help you become a better, faster, stronger and all around happier runner with everything you're doing. So sit back, relax, let's get this video done. Thanks very much for joining us for another video, guys. Cross training, it's become such a big thing in recent years. We've got the likes of Jim Wormsley, Tom Evans, uh, Steph Davis here in the UK, doing so much cross training, getting some fantastic results out of everything they're doing. And myself, I went through a period of about eight weeks earlier this year, when I was just doing a dedicated cross training thing, no running whatsoever to see how it affect my fitness. We'll link to all those videos down below if you wanna go and track that through. But overall, it was a really big success. Right guys, we're gonna split this video up into five sections. What, why, how, when, and who for as well. Let's get stuck in to the first section. Right guys, starting out, what is cross training? Well, essentially anything that isn't running when we're talking about this from a runner's perspective. So the most common things, things like cycling, things like yoga, Pilates, just going to the gym, getting on the cross trainer, on the stepper, doing some weights. They're the most popular things. And of course, the big one is swimming as well. Something I don't particularly like that much, but it is really good. Right guys, moving on to the why. Why are we gonna be doing cross training? Well, essentially, to get faster, to get better at running, we need to be running more. But unless we've got that perfect running form, that Kipchoge running form, it really does take its toll on our body. So first of all, we wanna work on our running form. That's for another video, and we've got some videos on that. We'll link to those down below. But when we run, we don't use every muscle in our body. And when we pick up sort of injuries and things, other muscles will tend to compensate. So by doing lots of cross training, we're strengthening up a load more muscles in our body and just building that really strong foundation that's gonna enable us to go out there and run that little bit more and improve our running that way. It's also a really good recovery tool. Just get that blood flowing through our body to get everything cleared out our system without having that impact that running will give us. So to sit on the bike, to go for an easy swim, to go for a walk is really gonna help flush out those toxins, and as I say, just get that heart rate up nicely without the impact. And then linked to that, we can really improve our cardiovascular system, again, without having that big impact on our body. We can be giving ourselves a really solid workout without our legs and everything breaking down by going for a run. And then finally, if we do pick up an injury and we need to take a little bit of time off running, so long as our physio says that we can be out there and do some cross training, it can be really good, as I did earlier in this year, to help maintain or even build on our fitness through that rehab time. Right guys, today's question of the day is what would you like to be doing more of to help improve your running? What type of cross training really inspires you to get out and training a little bit more? Let us know down in the comments, help everybody out with some ideas of all these different types of cross training and someone might read that and it might really help their running journey, right? Let us know down below what's the best form of cross training that you want to add into your routine. So who should be doing cross training? Well, anyone can be doing cross training, but starting out with a few examples, if you have picked up an injury and your physio says it's okay to train, then please do give some of these things a go and you can really help maintain or even improve that running fitness after that period of time off. Now, some of us runners are unfortunately really just more injury prone than others. That's just genetics, we can't do much about it. But what we can do, add some cross training and massively decrease that chance of getting injured again. And another good thing with cross training is the chance to try something new, something exciting, meet some new people. But of course, finally, in my own training, everything, I'm looking to really increase my running fitness, take my running to the next level. As I get a little bit older, I might not be able to run quite as much. So I'm looking to really take my fitness to that next level by adding all this cross training in, which is what we're doing at the moment. So we're all ready to cross train, how are we gonna go about this? We'll start out to chat about if you can't run, if you're off running, you're injured or whatever, you're giving running a, a bit of a break. Well, I really would take your running plan, what you'd normally do, get your normal structure for the week, and then replicate that on the bike, 
and on the cross trainer for those run sessions. So if you normally go out for 30 minutes on a Tuesday, then do 30 minutes on the bike or 30 minutes on the cross trainer. Again, with your intensity, keep that nice and low. The same sort of thing you'll be doing with your running. Now, if you've got intervals and things like that, again, you can do those on a bike. I really like doing them on the Concept2 rowing machine, or if I had a tempo or a threshold sort of session, I will do those on the stepper. Again, no real impact on that, but it enabled me to keep my heart rate up nice and high. So essentially what I'm saying is here, is just do your best to replicate what you would normally be doing with your running. And what I found best was use my bike, cross trainer, and those two other bits of equipment, the Concept2 rowing machine, and the stepper for the more high intensity bits. So if you are currently running and you want to add some cross training in, would really recommend starting out nice and slow. When you started running, you didn't just go out and try and run a marathon on the first day. So when you start cross training, things like that, take it nice and gentle at the start. Some really good examples, just spending 30 minutes on the bike, 30 minutes in the swimming pool, 30 minutes lifting some weights and doing some resistance training once or twice a week. Something like that is really gonna help build a nice solid foundation. Now, if you're not a big fan of doing things like speed work when you're out running, again, you can replicate that with your cross training. But essentially here for those first few weeks, what we would recommend is keeping that heart rate nice and low. And then you can start to add a little bit more intensity as time goes by. And finally, probably the most important section here is when are we gonna be doing all of this? Well, what we'd recommend is whatever you're doing, whether you're injured or you're running, is really keep your rest days, current, your current rest days, keep them the same. You don't want to be adding all of this extra workout load onto those rest days. Your rest days are the most important time of the week when you're recovering, when you're adapting, when you're becoming a lot stronger, fitter, faster, and all of that sort of stuff. And also avoid doing any cross training on your high intensity days. So if you're going to the track, you're doing some speed sessions, your long run day, probably at the weekend, things like that, avoid adding cross training in there. You're already, your body is already getting enough load on those days. When you want to be adding this, we'd recommend to your easy run days. So if you're doing an easy run in the morning, then do some cross training in the afternoon but you really wanna give yourself at least one to two rest days every week. Now, if you have got three or maybe four rest days, you don't run that much, then you can definitely add some onto those rest days, but really keep an absolute bare minimum of one to two rest days every week. Right guys, so in summary, there's no definite thing that will just work for absolutely everybody. A lot of cross training is a little bit of experimentation, a little bit of trying new things and seeing what you enjoy. That's the most important thing with everything. I don't like swimming, but I really admit that it is one of the best things you can do for cross training, but I do quite like cycling. So that's what I've done. I've enjoyed it and it's really helped me add some fitness. Experiment with things, try different things. If you are going to the gym, then try and invest in some personal training sessions if you've got the cash to be able to do that. It's really important to get some really good form when you're at the gym. Just build it in gradually over the next few weeks. And let us know if you've got any questions down in the comments below, things you want to ask about cross training, anything like that, we'll be more than happy to help you out. Right guys, hope you found the video useful. Please give it a like and share it with some of your running friends and help them out with their cross training. We're off to get some more training here in the Peak District, out here and yeah, in the build up for UTMB. Doing a lot of cross training for that. So all the best with your running guys. Please check out the website, latest and greatest running hats, t-shirts and things, all the training plans on there as well. Thank you to all the Patreon supporters, the legends here supporting us on YouTube as well. Keep working hard and keep on getting it done guys. And we will see you in the next one.